Ah. Ja, dan heb ik het Hi there, and welcome to this new video series that I'm putting up on uh, China Talk. Now, you might be familiar with our channel and see that I normally do a lot of videos about digital innovation and lectures and, and field research I do in China in these uh, areas. But something that uh, some of you might not know is that I have also got a very interesting, as far as I'm concerned, an interesting hobby, which is cooking authentic Chinese food. I spent a couple of years uh, living in China, working for Chinese NGOs in the, the charity sector. Um, <clears throat> and of course, in those years, I got to know the authentic Chinese food. Uh, and you, as, a, as a foreigner, you find out that it's extremely diverse and it's extremely tasty. Everybody, of course, has some dishes that they like or dislike. But most of the foreigners living in China are really impressed by Chinese food. And the problem is that once they move back home, which I did in 2013, me and my Chinese wife, we moved back to the Netherlands. And you find out that it's really difficult to find authentic Chinese food, especially we live in, in a, a smaller town which is not very close to the major Dutch cities of Amsterdam, The Hague or Rotterdam, where you find most of the authentic Chinese uh, restaurants. So in the Netherlands, you find Chinese restaurants everywhere, but the food that they actually prepare and serve is based a lot on Indonesian food, because when the first Chinese people arrived in the Netherlands, they found out that that's what Dutch people like to eat because of their, their links with uh, Indonesia. So. What they started doing is they started to prepare food that was very much influenced by Indonesian food. Uh, there was some Cantonese influences because most of the people uh, came actually from, from that region or from uh, Wenzhou. So it's really difficult to find good authentic Chinese food in those places. If you look at the menu, probably the only thing you find is Gong Bao Chi Ding, like uh, Gong Bao Chicken. As you, as you might also um, have heard it named. So that created a bit of a problem. As a matter of fact, on, on one of the first visits um, of my wife to the Netherlands, she's Chinese, I took her to a Chinese restaurant just as an experiment to see what would happen. And I can assure you she was not really impressed. She, she didn't find any dishes that she was familiar with and she thought it was all too sweet. For, uh, for her own taste. My wife was missing the Chinese food. I was also missing Chinese food. Um, and as a matter of fact, I'm not really somebody that spent a lot of time in the kitchen. The same thing goes for my Chinese wife. The problem is, not so much a problem, but uh, the situation was that um, Chinese people from certain generations, especially the ones that have been born after the 80s, are uh, not extremely used to cooking themselves. Uh, in uh, uh, in their own kitchen because most of them go out uh, eating out with friends is, a, is something that is a very social thing to do it, it maintains your social life in, in China um, but besides that eating out in China is not expensive and the quality is normally very high and there's so many restaurants that if you ever come across a bad one you just shift to a better one instead. And the diversity of the different dishes that you can find from different regions in China is immense. So why would you spend so much time in your own kitchen making something that is not as good and as far as cost is concerned, it's really not that different. So she also was not somebody with a lot of experience in cooking. So by the time that she went to um, university, she had to go back to university because she's studying to become a, a formal teacher, uh, Chinese language and culture. Um, she also had less time to, to cook. And what I decided at that time is to give it a try to cook authentic Chinese food. This sort of got out of hand a bit because today I am preparing my 750th Chinese dish. Yeah, you heard that correctly, I've made 750 different Chinese dishes. Now, when I made my first couple of dishes, I made a short slideshow video. And when I made 500, which was beginning of last year in 2019, I wrote an article about this obsession. But now reaching 750, I thought it would maybe be nice to share some of the experience and especially tell you a bit more about the cooking books that I'm using to make all of those 750 dishes or most of them. 
So that's what I'm planning to do in a series of videos. So in, in every video, I'm going to talk a bit about one book, about the dishes, about uh, what's good, what's not so good about these books. And I hope that that will help and inspire you to maybe pick up some of those books and try it for yourself. Because as I find out, it's really not all that difficult to uh, make Chinese food. And that especially goes for, for this book. This is a book, Every Grain of Rice by, uh, by Fuchsia Dunlop. And Fuchsia Dunlop is an interesting person because she's British, but she actually uh, spent a lot of time in China and she learned how to cook authentic uh, Sichuanese cuisine in, in a cooking school, in an, in an official cooking school in Sichuan. So she learned from the Chinese masters there. And she's incorporated a lot of what she's learned and a lot of other research that she's done in other regions in her cooking books. Now this specific, this specific one, this is not her first book, Every Grain of Rice it's called, but it is a book that I would suggest you start with. Because as it says, it's Every Grain of Rice, um, simple Chinese home cooking. So especially if you are very, um, if you might be a tad scared about getting into the kitchen trying to cook Chinese, as I said, it's not as difficult as it looks, but this is a very good start. It's not her first, first book, it's also not my personal favorite book, but it is definitely a book that helped me out. This is the book I started with and that will help you out as well. So as the title says, it's got simple Chinese cooking. It's got dishes from all over China, from different regions. Uh, of course, with a lot of things from Sichuan here, uh, in here as well, uh, because at the end of the day, that's, that's uh, Fuxia Dunlop's personal favorite uh, cuisine. Uh, same goes for me, by the way. Um, but you have different dishes. And one of the good things about the books of Fuxia Dunlop is I like the way she describes it. She's very clear in the ingredients. No vagueness that you sometimes find in, um, in cooking books. I also personally don't really like cooking books that are talking about cups as a measurement. Uh, I prefer to actually uh, have the, the, the weight of certain ingredients. So I think this is very clear. Also, uh, she makes it very clear what, how you need to prepare those dishes. So you're, you're not, while you're cooking, find out that you, oh, you had to chop up some, some spring onion, or slice some spring onion, uh, and you get completely stressed out because you haven't done that yet and your dinner is almost ready and that's the last ingredient. So it's very, very clear. Another thing I, I really like about, um, about her book, books is that every recipe comes with a short story here on the side, which tells you a bit more about the dish and how she got to know it. So these dishes get a lot more personality. Those dishes that actually also look good normally come with a, a colorful photo, which also helps a lot to, uh, to show for yourself if you uh, obtain the, re the result that was actually Fushia had in mind when she made the recipes. There are some recipes in here that do not have a picture. Now, when you prepare those recipes, you'll find out why they don't have a photograph in this book. And that's mostly because they just don't look very nice. And that might scare you off from making those recipes. But what I found is not having a picture does not mean that you, it's not a delicious dish. It just probably doesn't look that nice on a photograph. But there's lots and lots of photographs in here. It also has a, an extensive section on what ingredients to use. And that can be very, very handy. Uh, because especially if you go to the, uh, the, the Chinese supermarket, there might be certain things you're not quite familiar with. And I personally, I myself have found that all of the different types of preserved and pickled vegetables that are being used in the Chinese kitchen, I'm personally not uh, a big fan of those, but my, my wife really likes them. So I cook quite a few dishes which incorporate those. Um, but there's so many different ones that it can be quite confusing. And this book does quite a good job in, in explaining how to keep them apart. So, the total book has over 200 recipes and variations because lots of uh, recipes actually come with some ideas of, of how you could do a different variation with different ingredients or how in China different variations in different regions are being served. So altogether that makes for over 200 dishes. Now I have from this book prepared 
a bit over 180, I think 185 different dishes. The ones that I'm still supposed to do, you can see here, are mostly in the vegetable session section of the book and include some, uh, some vegetable ingredients that are a bit hard to find, like yellow chives or um, uh, um, flowering chives that I have not been able to find in the supermarket. Uh, there's some other ingredients as well. So I'm still trying to figure it out because it's, I know you're not supposed to read a cooking book from cover to cover, but I do try to make every possible uh, recipe in here. And like I said, I've crossed the 180 mark with this. So I'm, I'm coming quite close. So all of these dishes are relatively simple to make. What you do need is you need to have certain ingredients uh, that are being used in these dishes. But you'll find that most of the dishes in here, not counting those more rare vegetables, but most of the dishes in here um, have ingredients that can either be found in your local regular supermarket, like spring onion, for instance, uh, or ginger uh, or garlic. That's, that's never a big problem. But uh, some of the other things that you need can also easily be found in uh, Asian supermarkets. Now, some of the things that you will definitely need is uh, Chinese cooking wine, Xiaoxing, Xiaoxing wine. You need to have uh, some soy sauces. Light soy sauce is mostly used for taste, whereas dark soy sauce is mostly used to give color to a dish, uh, mostly in meat dishes. Something I really adore is uh, Chinese Xinjiang vinegar. Um, it's got an excellent taste and it's used in many different uh, dishes. Um, something that you often add a bit of at the end of a recipe is sesame oil, just to give some extra fragrance to, uh, to different dishes. And for uh, some of the more spicy uh, recipes, you are suggested to use chili oil. Now you can get this chili oil in um, many different Asian supermarkets. I've used this a lot in the beginning of my Chinese cooking, but I quit doing that because this is actually quite strong. And I found that it's not as tasty as making your own chili oil. Now, not only does making your own chili oil create this immense, incredible fragrance in, in your uh, home the rest of the day, but it also tastes much better. And so this is a jar of chili oil that I've made myself and it's excellent. And the way you do this, how to do it is very simple and it's also described in this book. So the book doesn't only have a lot of dishes, but it also describes how you can make some of the ingredients yourself. Now, like I said, this book is the one that I suggest you start with, but it's not my personal favorite book. We'll come to my personal favorite book in uh, a later video. Why is that? Um, after I started cooking Chinese, I actually found out that I had to do some registration to figure out and to, to, to sort of remember which ones were really good, which ones were nice, and which one just weren't quite my or and all my wife's taste. So what we started to do is every recipe in the book, <clears throat> we gave one of these little stickers. So red would mean that's, that was disgusting. I, would, I never want to eat that again. I definitely never want to eat that again. A lot of the recipes get a yellow sticker. As you can see, there's not much left on this sheet, but a yellow st sticker means that's really tasty. I'll have that again. Maybe not every day, but I'll definitely have that again. And then you have the green stickers, and those are the most excellent dishes. Those are the most tasty dishes that we find in those cooking books. And we basically, after making a book, uh, after making a recipe, my wife and I sit down, we have this dish, we look at each other and we give it red, yellow or green as sort of a rating. And we put that in the book. We also put that in a spreadsheet in an article I wrote about the, 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 the obsessive administration I've started doing. I'll put a link to that in the video notes. And what we do there is we, um, in that in administration, we also put those colors in. So. By doing that, I can actually see how many dishes I've made and how many dishes get a red, yellow and green sticker. Now, my own personal background is in data. I've been a database marketeer. I've done data-driven marketing. 
I'm extremely interested in statistics. So if I look at this book, and it's a great book, it's got lots of, it's got very few red stickers. It's got lots of yellow stickers, and it's got a bunch of green stickers. Now, the rate of green stickers is about a bit above about 20%. So one out of five in uh, of the recipes we've made from this book is really, really extremely excellent. The other ones are mostly yellow. Great, tasty recipes, something that you will cook uh, again uh, one day or another, especially the ones that are really, uh, relatively easy to prepare. But the, there's one fifth rate of excellent green stickers, excellent recipes in this book. Again, it's a matter of taste, so you might actually have more uh, recipes that you like. I found that some other books by Fuchsia, we'll talk about later, um, have a higher rating. There's more dishes that I truly love in those books. But given that this is the book with the most simple recipes and a very diverse collection and selection of different dishes from all over China, I do recommend that you start out with this one. Now, as you can see, this one has been well used. I had to put some tape on it because it was starting to fall apart. So that shows that I'm using this quite a lot. Now, a question we often get is, what is your favorite recipe? Which is really, really difficult. Now, what I'm able to do by using those green stickers, I am able to uh, show you some of the uh, dishes that we really like, that we gave her a green sticker. I won't show all of them, but I'll show some of, it, uh, some of them. Now, I have to say that uh, since this was the first book that I used, the quality of the pictures that I've taken and the quality of presentation is not always incredibly high. Um, I've, I've also, having done those 750 dishes, I've found that uh, there's different ways of presentation and also taking pictures that make the food look just much better. But I do want to share some, but keep in mind that some of the dishes are supposed to be maybe a bit better than you see them here. So some highlights. First we have red braised pork. It's a really good dish um, with pork belly, slow cooked pork belly. It's sweet, it uses a lot of sugar, it uses cinnamon, it uses anise. It's, it's one of the favorites of my wife as well, from, from all of the books that, that we've made. So this is one. Um, <clears throat> you also find lots of varieties of this dish in, uh, in other of, uh, books by Fuchsia. Then you have a very simple dish, sour and hot silken tofu, tohua. It's a very soft type of tofu, uh, it, with using ch chili oil, preferably, like I said, your own made chili, chili oil, um, some peanuts, some, uh, some spring onions sometimes. So it's a really simple and easy dish to make. It's an incredibly tasty, incredibly tasty. Black bean uh, chicken, doche, doche di ding, um, is a dish. I'll talk more about the, uh, the, the black beans, the black fermented beans in a different video on, um, on cuisine from uh, Hunan. But this is also in this book. You have stir fried tofu, which is firm tofu with black beans and chili is a really, really good one. This picture doesn't look that nice, but fish fragrant aubergines is an incredible dish. And I think it's actually one of Fuchsia Dunlop's own favorite dishes, but it is also a dish that amazes a lot of foreigners and becomes a favorite of them when they live in China. What the Chinese people are able to do with an eggplant, with an aubergine, and having it soak up the different flavors with garlic and ginger and chili bean paste, is, is incredible. Um, and this is one of my personal favorite dishes as well. And it was one of the first dishes that I prepared from, uh, from this book. Next up, we have Yangzhou fried rice, a really nice fried rice with some ham in it, some shrimps in it, some egg. So it goes really well with other dishes you might serve to your friends. There's a couple of uh, recipes for dumplings uh, in this book, among which hundun, as they are called in parts of China and we often know them as wontons. And wontons are just really, really nice. Then twice cooked pork. You cook it, you boil it once, the pork, you put it in the fridge, you slice it in very thin uh, slices. It's all made with pork belly. And then you re-stir fry it with different ingredients. Also one of our favorites. It's included in this book. 
sweet and sour spare ribs, Tang Su Pai Gu. Um, excellent stuff, really nice, tasty, sweet dish. Um, Jiajiang noodles is something that I used to eat quite a lot in China, one of my favorite noodle dishes um, is in, available in this book. Uh, General Tso's chicken is not really a, um, a dish that is authentic to China, but it's included in this book anyway. Um, I'm going to talk a bit more about it probably in one of the other videos, um, because one of the books that Fuxia wrote has two versions, a more authentic and the Western popular version in it. Uh, there's also some sweet dishes and some dishes that use glutinous rice, among which uh, Tang Yuan. Tang Yuan is normally uh, these glutinous rice balls with a nice sweet filling. But there's also uh, a variety in here, in this book, where you cover them in roasted uh, peanut flour and peanuts. That's really nice stuff. Another dumpling dish, I found out that uh, serving dumplings in a different way, not using your own sauce, but serving them in a soup, a hot and sour soup, is also a really nice way to uh, eat these dumplings. It's a variety that's included in this book. Like I said, you have the standard dishes, but also some of the varieties. So these are just one uh, or a couple of the, um, the dishes that earned a green sticker in here. And like I said, uh, there's about 20% that earned a green, we gave a green sticker. That makes about 40 dishes and all of the other ones are really really tasty most of the time as well so to wrap up this is where my journey that today arrived at the 750 dish started this is a book that i highly recommend when you're starting out to do your own authentic chinese cooking get your own ingredients there's lots of stuff in here it's it's really not intimidating uh, the way it's been presented the way it's been written so do give it a try because you don't have to drive all those miles to a big city uh, to find your own authentic chinese food so that's the end of my first video um, what i'll do is i'll make a couple of more videos looking at some of the other books uh, this probably this video is probably a bit longer because of the introduction so i might do one or two books in the next videos i hope you like it you can hit the like button you can follow our channel for uh, for later um, new videos so thank you and if you have any questions feel free to um, leave a comment in the, uh, the box here down below or just to get in contact through our website chinatop.nl thank you <laughs>